from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast. And now for your host and CISO, James A. Good morning, folks. Happy Monday. Thank you for tuning in to the Practitioner Brief on this Monday, November 30th, last day of this month. 31 days left in this year after today. 31 days until 2020 is over. On January 1st, I am praying for rain to wash over this great land of ours so that we can start a new 2021 that is different from 2020, which has been an extremely challenging year for many. Today also wraps up our Veteran November series. It is with great sadness that I wrap up this 30-episode inspiration of just some amazing men and women who served our nation, who are currently serving uh, in InfoSec roles um, across some of the uh, country's most amazing companies, some of them entrepreneurs that have started their own businesses. Today, we'll be signing off with AJ Yon over at ByteCheck, just brand new start. He just started his organization, so you can check out that episode today at 2 o'clock Eastern at 6 p.m. today. We will have our Veteran November wrap-up party with Brian Lozado, Chris Cochran, and all the men and women who joined me on the podcast, so make sure you tune in to that as well. You can register on our LinkedIn page at CyberHub Podcast slash Talk. Before we continue, though, make sure you subscribe to our podcast right now. If you're listening on your favorite podcast listening platform, make sure you subscribe and share. Please, folks, share this podcast with others. You can get our entire practitioner brief on our website at CyberHubPodcast.com. And now let's get right into today's practitioner brief. Um, It's been a holiday weekend, so I hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. Not a lot going on over the weekend. Obviously, there's a ton of stuff around, um, you know, the election and Dominion, and we're not going to get into that today, although I'm pretty sure we're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow. I'm simply waiting for a confirmation for a story that I'll be breaking hopefully tomorrow on the Dominion voting systems as well. Um, Something that should raise some eyebrows um, also. So let's get into some of our headlines today. Tens of dormant North American networks are suspiciously resurrected at once. Vietnam-linked cyber spies use new macOS backdoor in attacks. And system warns of a password leak on vulnerable Fortinet VPNs. More than 50 networks in the North American region suddenly burst to life after being dormant for a long period of time, according to Spamis. The Geneva-based international nonprofit organization is focused on tracking spam, phishing, malware, and botnets and provides threat intel that can help filter spam and related threats. Last week, the organization noticed that within days, 52 dormant networks in the Aaron, North America area were resurrected concurrently and that each of them has been announced by a different autonomous system number, also inactive for a significant period of time. In 48 cases, these are 20 networks accounting to to 4,096 IPv4 addresses, and in the remaining four cases, there are 19 networks with 8,192 addresses, respectfully. Um, The main issue, according to the organization, is that chances are almost zero for 52 organizations to suddenly come back online and all at once. Uh, Some organizations may resurface, but something here smells fishy to them. Um, Track routes and pings indicate that they are physically hosted in the New York City area, according to the organization. And given the likelihood that these are, you know, kind of eerie seeking They raise my alarm bells and have me prepared to uh, experience something. The company has published the full details as well as the block list ID that we can add into our networks in order to ensure we don't fall victims to that. I actually added this um, first thing when I saw it to my to-do list today. So uh, make sure you guys also do the same. Uh, Vietnam-linked cyber spies are using the new macOS backdoor in attacks. This according to Trend Micro security researchers who've identified a new macOS backdoor that they believe is used by the Vietnamese threat actor Ocean Lotus, also referred to as APTC00 or APT32, and believed to be a well-resourced and determined Ocean Lotus has been observed, mainly targeting government and corporate entities in Southeast Asia. Earlier this year, the group uh, engaged in COVID-19 espionage attacks targeting China. Compared to previous malware variants associated with Ocean Lotus, the newly discovered samples show similarities in dynamic behavior and code, clearly linking the threat actor. 
The app bundle, according to Trend Micro, explains that it's seen by an operating system as an N-supported directory type, meaning that the open command is used to execute it. Within the app bundles, the security researchers discover two files, namely a shell script that performs multiple malicious routines and a word file that is displayed during execution. The shell, the shell script is responsible for deleting the file quarantine attribute in the file for the files in the bundle and for removing the file quarantine attribute of files in the system, uh, copying the Word doc to a temp directory and opening it, extracting the second stage binary and changing its access permission, then deleting the malware app bundle and the Word document from the system. Um, as for the second stage payloads, it's responsible for dropping a third stage payload, creating persistence, changing the timestamp of the sample using the touch command and as well as deleting itself. Featuring encrypted strings, the third stage payload contains two main functions for collecting and sending operating system information to the command and control server, for receiving additional communication information, and for performing backdoor activities. Trend Micro has analyzed some of the CNC domains as well, and all of that information can be found on our website at cyberhubpodcast.com. Our final story, CISA is warning of a password leak on vulnerable Fortinet VPNs. Um, CISA is warning that essentially the agency's alert, which was issued on Friday, came a few days after we actually reported this here on the Cyberhub Podcast Practitioner Brief last week. Fortinet notes that attackers may try to take it. Uh, CISA, sorry, notes that attackers may try to take advantage of the long-standing vulnerability in the 40 OS system, file dubbed CVE 2018-13379, which could lead to further exploitation. Fortinet has been urging its users to patch this flaw since it was discovered last year, and still there are many, many of those that have not been patched, which goes to a whole other set of issues. So make sure you patch your Fortinet vpn asap that's it for us here today folks a little shorter than usual but give you back a few more minutes to your monday today after a long weekend i hope you enjoyed your thanksgiving make sure you tune into our final episode of veteran november as of december we'll go back to our regular scheduled podcast if you remember what that was like a practitioner brief monday through thursday at tech corner on uh friday and our CISO talk podcast will start coming back on thursday each and every single week on our CISO talk podcast channel which you can go subscribe to there as well for all of us for myself here at cyber podcast i want to wish you all a a great great end of the year thanks so much for listening today we'll be back with more tomorrow again dominion voting system tomorrow i'm waiting for confirmation on a story i thought i'd have it today where i can report it um and give you guys a little bit more information it's just a really interesting piece of information that i that i wanted to share um but I couldn't get that confirmation and I won't report it without that confirmation. So hopefully I'll have it by tomorrow. I'll be pressing ahead. Until then, stay cyber safe and we'll be back uh, tomorrow. We love feed. Make sure to connect with us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform.